Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yes, that's the matter we continue our focus on today on the program. And we're joined now by Chief Mike Ozekoma, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you for coming on this morning, sir. Thank you very much. Well, it's, it's interesting, this, uh, this matter, because we've read your uh, article on this matter. You say that this was longer for you and that that decision to suspend him was right. In fact, you say he should have been sacked. Yeah. But what wonders? Now that he's suspended, the argument some seem to be moving is that where does the powers come from for him to be suspended? The, the, the power comes from, the power is inherent in an employer to suspend an employee. It doesn't even have to be written. Even in the CBN Act? Even in the CBN Act. What happens is that the CBN Act simply talks about removal from office. Section 11, subsection 2F. But he did not dwell on the issue of suspension. You and I know that suspension is a step towards removal or dismissal, even within channels here. Now, I've, I've had some lawyers argue, and to some extent, they have their point, that one of the legal principles of, of statutory interpretation is that whatever is not stated is excluded. Right? And that since suspension was not specifically mentioned in the CBN Act, it means it was excluded. But such argument forgets a sister principle of statutory interpretation that what is not forbidden or outlawed is allowed. In other words, if a law does not specifically say you cannot do this, it means you can do it. Now, we have a CBN governor, now former governor. Not, not suspended who, governor. Because well, he's not well, well, suspended. So let me use the word suspended governor. Okay. Suspended governor. Who was employed directly by Mr. President, mind you, under Section 8 of the CBN Act. Because a lot of people have had talking, talking about autonomy of CBN. It's as if the governor simply comes or came from the heavens or from the blues. We forget that he had an appointor, that he was employed by someone. Who was the person? Section 8 says it is the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that employed the CBN governor and the deputy governors. That is what the section says. Now, where you know you are an employee, there are certain ethics, certain ethical, behavioral tendencies expected of you as an employee of an institution. Oh, just a moment, sir. You know, I, before, before you go ahead, you know, the, although there's been that argument about suspension, those who also argue you know about what is not stated yeah. is excluded yeah. they also argue that the if you look at the act of the cbn they go through great pains to give the cbn and the position of cbn governor great autonomy yeah. and that's for a reason it's one of the reasons why if you're appointed you have to be confirmed by the senate and then if you're going to be sacked you also have to be supported by yeah. the senate just a moment yeah i i, I agree Autonomy, let me tell you, the CBN is autonomous to the extent that it still reports to the president. There are many sections under the CBN Act that you will see that, for example, before they can ex appoint external auditors and fix their remuneration, they must have to, the board must have to tell Mr. President who must agree. The autonomy is not a loose canon, it's not at large. What the law did was to merely give a kind of um, division of labor or the principles of separation of powers so that there will be no tyranny. That is why it says when you are appointing let the Senate affirm or confirm by two third majority vote. Also when you want to dismiss the Senate should also confirm by two third majority vote. A lot of people have not looked at section 11 subsection 2C also who says that the central bank governor can also be removed from office for 
serious misconduct. I will come to that. But when we talk about this removal to be, so, to be supported by the third majority vote of the Senate, the question is, how does it come? Does Mr. President go to Senate and say, Senate, hello, I'm thinking of suspending the Governor of Central Bank. I want you to give me confirmation or power to suspend him. No. He first dismisses. He first sacks. It is that dismissal or that removal that he takes to Senate for confirmation. Just like in the appointment of the governor or of a minister, he first notes down the name. He takes the name to the Senate and says, this is the person I've appointed as the governor of Central Bank, like he has just done suggestively. I will want you to approve this. In other words, one comes before the other. Dismissal takes place, then you go to the Senate for confirmation. A lot of people have not looked at that. Okay. And that also for serious misconduct, which is different from subsection 2F. That's 2C the, now. Yeah, 2C now. We say the president can remove. 2C talks about for acts of serious misconduct. Who determines that? That is the issue. Again, the CBN Act is silent on who determines when there are acts of misconduct. And because he's silent on that, Mr. President has determined, based on report, very serious report, by the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, FRCN, I always take it to be like Radio, uh, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, which itself replaced an earlier act. That gave, that, that very institution is in charge is a regulatory agency in the country that looks at the corporate governance and the financial reporting system of all organs of government, including the CBN. If that's section 62, subsection 3, or that as specifically says, the CBN government can be investigated. So the autonomy I've had people shout about is not an autonomy that makes the CBN governor as a Robinson Crusoe's uh, Daniel Defoe's Ireland, a treasure Ireland, being an island unto himself, untouchable. You know, there's... Who cannot be talked to. It is not that. He himself is subject to certain directives of Mr. President under the Act, to certain directives of the National Assembly of the Act. For example, can the, I will go into this. Can the CBA governor, for example, begin to make humongous donations to charitable causes not seen, not foreseen by the very CBN Act itself, querying his governor. Can he also do that without going to National Assembly to say, this is my budget. Can I, this is what I want to do. Can I just say something? Yes. You, you, talked to him that you said something about the law being silent about a certain issue. Yes. And that means it can be worked, it can be used. Yes. Now, you just said here now that the CBN government did a donation, or make, can he make some donations that are not foreseen by the law? No, that one is foreseen. Oh, no. CBN Act is not, mind you, CBN Act itself is again not an island unto itself. It's just an act. It's one of the laws of Nigeria. Mm. The Constitution, for example, is, is the supreme law. And we all know that under the Constitution, any department of government, agency of government, the federal government itself, the judiciary, the legislature, all their expenditures must be taken to the National Assembly as a budget for approval. Okay. It's not silent. That one is not silent. If the law at is, all. If the law is silent about an issue, does that give room for lawlessness, so to speak? No. I have not seen any lawlessness that you suspend that you suspend an employee of an institution. I've heard people talking there and then I ask myself, am I in another country? Hello, in the UK only last month. The Minister of Immigration put in a letter of resignation at that piece of new trade me. And I said, let me see, why is he resigning? He said, five years ago, I employed a house help. And all the papers of the house help were, uh, were proper and complete and appropriate. And then it came to a time that the minister started 
telling them that whoever did not have complete papers, correct papers, should leave the country. Meanwhile, within his own house, the very house held, the papers had expired. Unknown to the minister, and the evidence showed that he did not know that the papers had actually expired. And when it was, his attention was drawn to it, what did he do? He came quietly and said, Mr. Prime Minister, here's my letter of resignation. I hereby resign my appointment because I have to hold myself to a higher standard than that which I hold members of the public to. If you must be a sentinel at the apex back of Nigeria, like Caesar's wife, you must be above board. Sanusi, from all indications, particularly the last one and a half years, appeared to be working in an environment that he has or he had irreconcilable differences with, fundamental differences with the system where you are working. The right thing to do out of self-respect, character, and dignity is to put in your letter of resignation and we will all hail you and clap for you as a hero. Let me tell you, I want you to see some of the I didn't bring my laptop. But let me, I have some judges here. Let me show you some of the, the, the main functions of the CBN Act, which are to ensure monetary and price stability, to issue legal tender currency, to maintain external reserves so as to safeguard the international value of the legal tender. That's the Naira to promote a sound financial system, right? To act as banks, or as, as a bank to other bankers, because the CBN is bank to other bankers, so as to provide economic and financial advice to the government. And then also to administer the banks and other financial institutions act. Now, these are the primary duties of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Under these primary duties, you will find that the minister is a part and parcel of the government to grow the economy, to bring about investors' confidence. Yes, the minister or the CBN governor, you mean? Sorry, did I say minister? CBN governor, I'm sorry. 